Hello all, my name is Lauren Riley. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video and learn about my story. I'm requesting $50,000 in order to transition into the career or the public speaking arena. And so, the reason I'm asking for um, a good amount is yeah, for a few things. One, for a good uh, laptop uh, with it's got at least 8 um, gigs worth of RAM and with a relatively either mid-range graphics card. So that those normally run about anywhere between a thousand and two thousand dollars that I've seen. Yes, you can get some cheaper stuff, but I'm just you know saying. And so basically, what I'm going to be publicly speaking about are things in regarding the uh, disabled population, such as housing, uh, transportation, and as well as employment. And so, in order to uh, put myself out there as a speaker. I'm going to need to make my own website as well as, you know, come up with a, dem a demo video of me giving a speech to a crowd. And so, I mean, the going rate to uh, rent out a whole, not that you necessarily, need, you know, it needs to be done this way per se, but to rent out a whole or something similar is around 5000 to $8,000. Because it's an entrepreneurship type of venture, I'm, trying, I'm also going to be taking classes in regarding taxes for, um, for this kind of way. Maybe not even hire a CPA for a while to get my uh, feet wet. And so therefore, all of these, you know, these things, these classes, are uh, for both public speaking as well as the uh, um, in regarding financial uh, gain and CPA classes, it's going to be a you know a lead up to about fifty thousand dollars. So that's why I'm asking for a hefty amount, and the reason why I want to get into public speaking in regards to disability is because I myself have three palsy, and I have faced issues regarding housing and employment. So, for example, Social Security pays about a thousand dollars a month, and you can only get Social Security if you can't work at all, or if you make seven twenty from the uh, job that you have. But if you have worked and sustained the job, or um, you know can find you know have enough initiative to do your own thing, then you can no longer get on Social Security. And so I'm not only doing this, you know, for my own thing, just because I want to transition into a different career. I'm doing it to help, um, you know, a lot of other people. At least that's what I, you know, aspire to do. And so, for example, transportation-wise, there's Uber, Lyft, and public transportation. Uber and Lyft are always trying to expand their territories, and uh, a lot of the drivers use Toyota Corollas, Camrys, and RAV4s. And so if I can keep the drivers in the same family, for example, maybe I can talk to, to Toyota, um, you know, to help paying for the fares for those who are disabled, while also expanding the networks for Uber and Lyft at the same time. More riders means more drivers, which means more uh, room to expand into different cities and so on and, and so forth. And with so many drivers using, you know, very similar vehicles, and, uh, you know, there should be no problem with uh, Toyota selling, selling more uh, of their vehicles and therefore giving, uh, letting the drivers get, you know, more bang for their buck, riding people around and decreasing the fare for those who are disabled. So, I mean, that's the idea of it anyway. And that's what I plan to do. And so most jobs that are able to work at home for disabilities are, um, you know, you may, they pay about $8 an hour. Eight dollars an hour is not you know enough to live off of any place, whether you live in California or Pennsylvania or down south. I mean, it's kind of eight dollars an hour is nothing. It's I would say it's peanuts, but it's not even that. And so, basically, I'm throwing my hand into the ring, and I'm gonna fight for you know people with disabilities to have you know a stable income, a good income, and fight for people for people with disabilities that have you know a great mind. Like I do, you know, I might have CP and have specific diplegia, that type of form, but I have a great mind. I have the willingness to do, uh, do all the work and I have the ambition to make things better for pe other people. And so that's why I'm asking for the amount of $50,000. I'm worth it because everyone else is worth it. 
And so I'm going to help the uh, nation as well as the world be a better place. One of my uh, dream, one of my highest dreams is to travel to uh, other countries and see how they deal with disabilities and how disabilities are dealt with as a whole. Not really it per- pertains to uh, transportation or um, and housing employment, although I will be looking at that when I um, travel. But you know, I just want to see what the laws are and how things are handled in different countries. But then again, that dream is quite a ways away and I'm kind of getting a little bit off topic, but I'm just, you know, telling you a bit more about myself and why, you know, wish to do public speaking. But it's just, you know, and as far as employment goes, the, the newest things out there on Google, the first page are from 2016 from the uh, Department of Labor. And here we are, 2018 is coming to a close, and yet there's still no new data from them. And the rest of the data is from 2008 to 2012. So, it's kind of a little bit of an alarm when you look up, you know, employment statistics regarding the disabled, and you're getting things from two years ago and uh, beyond and before that. So, that's why I'm trying to make sure that everything is up to date for the um, people with disabilities. And so, people can see the newest information when they look those things up and uh you know with me with my with me throwing my hat in the ring um you know things shouldn't get a lot better things should be more up to date than what they are you know obviously i can't give you hour hour minute by minute but you know when you go up on google searches you'll be able to see more uh, more recent information than from 2016. as far as housing is concerned most apartment complexes have, you know, steps going up, steps going down. There's not a whole lot of places where people can just, like, you know, it's on one level. And it's affordable at the same time. So, I mean, you know, the only op- options for people with disabilities that it seems like is either, you know, deal with steps. Or get somebody that has a ranger place that with no steps and they have a rent room there. But th- then again, you know, why should people with disabilities be stuck with always renting a room with, from someone else? when not having your own place. And a lot of the places that have um, disabled and elderly mixed are, you know, their waiting list of 13 years plus long. That, those lists are, that's too, that's too insane for me. I can't wait 13 for, th- years for housing, can you? And so that's what all this is, this is all about. I'm trying to make life better, you know, not only for myself, but for those with disabilities. And if I can, you know, outreach to everyone that I can, then all the better. And if I can impact all the lives that I can, even for those that don't have disabilities, then that's all, you know, all the better. And so, field knowledge will help me get my foot in the door and help me make, at least begin to make the small changes that need to be made so that people with disabilities, you know, can live a more comfortable lifestyle. I mean, the reason why this video is being recorded the way that it is is because, as of right now, at this time, I mean, I, I, this is what I have access to, and it's, you know, a phone, so that's why I'm just requiring better equipment so I can do better things for myself and for others. Thank you for your time, and have a nice day.